Welcome back to View Session. This is your trainer and PMP coach Anand. This is continuation of schedule management knowledge area. In this session, you will learn estimate activity duration process. The learning objective of this session are we will start with overview to understand the purpose of estimate activity duration process. We'll go through process definition, talk about some of the important scheduling terms, go through the input tool techniques and output, talk about some of the estimation techniques in detail like analogous, parametric and three point estimates and output, which is duration estimate and basis of estimation. And finally, a quick review. Before getting into the details, let's take a look at list of all six processes. So we have plan schedule management, define activities, sequence activities, and we are learning estimate activity duration process. After this, we still have develop schedule and finally control schedule process. Estimation. It's a very generic word and get interpreted in different ways by different stakeholders. So clarity around the estimation, roles and responsibilities to estimate are very critical for project planning. One of the key questions related to estimation is who should do the estimation? Is it a project manager's job? The answer is no. Estimation is a joint activity and respective expert has to estimate their work. So who are the experts? It can be subject matter expert, say on the software project, it can be technical lead, solution architect, they can be internal to organization or they can be external to organization. And project manager is responsible to aggregate. So I'm not saying project manager has no responsibility, but the actual estimation is done by expert and aggregation is done by project manager. Before getting into the estimation details, it is very important to understand the factors that can influence estimation. So what are these factors? Factors can be number of resources, quality of resources, advances in the technology, staff motivation, and there is a law called as law of diminishing returns. Of course, we'll talk about each of them in detail. Number of resources. General perception of management is add more resources to reduce timeline. However, increasing number of resources to twice does not always reduce the time by half. Sometimes it may increase duration due to new risk, see added risk. Advances in technology also plays an important role in estimating duration. For example, Road construction work can be expedited by procuring fully automated machines. This technology advances may impact duration, cost and resource requirement. Staff motivation. Staff motivation is a key to productivity. Motivated resources can work faster and produce quality output, especially in knowledge oriented projects or tasks. As a project manager, you have to be aware that when resources start working at a last possible moment before the deadline, Parkinson's law come into effect. What is Parkinson's law? Work expands to fill the time available for its completion. For example, project requirement typically increases to the extent that resources get fully utilized. Also be aware of a student syndrome. Student syndrome refers to a planned procrastination. For example, a student will only start working on an assignment at the last possible moment before its deadline. And this eliminates any potential buffer or margin and puts them, your students, under tremendous pressure. But ultimately, works get completed. The last point is law of diminishing returns. Law of diminishing returns refer to a point at which the level of profit or benefit gain is less than the amount of efforts and or money invested. When one factor, example resource is increased and all other factors remain fixed, you may get increased output. For example, in a software development project, 
Coding may complete faster when you add more software developers. However, a point will eventually be reached at which addition of that factor start yielding diminishing output. For example, adding 10 more software developers is not going to reduce 4 month development duration to 10 days. Let's understand this through a graph. On the graph, output is on the y-axis, which is in this case a unit of work completed, and input is on x-axis. The graph has the three stages, most productive, diminishing returns, and negative returns. Now let's understand this. When added input is lead to higher productivity or reduced timeline, it pays to invest more. So management will be happy to invest. But then there comes a point when each added input leads to decreasing rate of output. Now it is the best to stop somewhere within this phase. And finally, there is a phase where you don't get any return. In fact, your overall output is decreased. So you should, yeah, you must avoid this phase. Let's look at some of the scheduling terms. There are three different terms, efforts, duration, and elapsed time. Most of the time, these are used interchangeably in different organizations. For PMP exam, you need to align your understanding of these terms with the PINBOG guide. Let me explain this through an example. Imagine you want to paint your house and you call a painter to find out how long it will take to finish the painting. You say, Mr. Painter, how long it will take to paint my house? It's an independent four bedroom house, which is a duplex house. And it has a main hall and kitchen. And of course, one more family, uh, family room. Painter thinks for a moment and he recollects, well, two weeks back only I had painted similar house, which was independent house, duplex house, four bedroom, and you have a main hall and a family room. And he says, well, it will take 20 days. Now this 20 days is referred as efforts. Well, don't expect him to come from tomorrow and complete the work in 20 days. Then he thinks for a moment and say, well, we work minimum two persons together. So in this case, two of us will come and finish work in 10 days. This 10 days is referred as a duration. Now, is this is a sufficient to give a painter order and start the work? No, you need to have a proper start and end date. So further painter says, I'm busy for next two weeks. I can start work from 1st of Jan. And by the way, we don't work on weekends. So weekends will be off. And in second week, my daughter has a birthday party. So that's also going to be off. So with all this information, you can say this is a complete schedule for the activity. And this information goes into project schedule and it is referred as elapsed time. So in this case, the timeline is from 1st of Jan till 15th of Jan, excluding two weekend, yeah, two, uh, yes, two weekends and one holiday. Now to summarize, what is efforts? Efforts refers to labor unit required to complete activity. It is, uh, it can be expressed in hours, days or weeks, and it is a billable time for a labor. What is duration? It can be work days or work week. So it is a total time or work period to complete the activities based upon resource availability. And remember, it does not include holidays or waiting period. And finally, elapsed time. It is a calendar time required to complete activities based on resource availability and including their holidays and waiting period. I hope you got understanding of all these three terms. Let's move on. Let's take a look at the process definition. Estimate activity duration is a process of estimating number of work period needed to complete each activity with estimated resources. It is a major input to develop schedule process. So going forward, when you finalize the schedule, this is very, very important input. 
So what are ITTOs? So we have inputs, tools and techniques and output. Inputs are project management plan, project document, enterprise environmental factor and organization process assets. Project management plan. The component of project management plan that are input to this process are schedule management plan and the scope baseline. Schedule management plan gives the guidelines that help with estimating activity duration. Scope baseline. Remember, this is combination of project scope statement, WBS and WBS dictionary. Project scope statement provides details about major deliverables, assumptions, constraints, etc. Assumptions. For example, Project expect a senior expert architect to work on the technical design due to complexity of requirement on this project. How this will impact estimation? Well, multiple resources may not be able to reduce the estimation proportionally because it needs a senior expert. Constraints, for example, requirement has to be implemented before 1st of say August. Now this might be because of government regulation. Now how this will be managed? Multiple resources may be added for this activity to shorten the duration. In this process, the activity durations are added to the activities list for each work package in the WBS. And WBS dictionary may give you information on uh, constraints or available resources which might affect the duration estimates. The next input is project document. Now you can see lots of project documents there. These are mostly output of previous process define activities. We will list them here and we'll talk about each of them in coming slide. So the inputs are activity list, activity attributes, milestone list, resource requirement, resource breakdown structure, project team assignment, resource calendar, assumption log, risk register and lesson learned register. Activity list. It includes all activities needed for the project. Each of these activities will be estimated in the current process. Activity attributes are the information about these activities. In previous process, few attributes were documented starting from current process. More attributes will be identified and added to activity attributes. For example, predecessor or successor relationship among activities and any logical relationship between two activities. Milestone list, it includes list of all milestones on the project schedule. Resource requirements. This is an output of process estimate activity resources from resource management knowledge area. This is important input which provides type and quantities of resources required for each activity in work package. Generally, these are aggregated to determine resource estimate for each work package. Resource breakdown structure. This is an output of estimate activity resource again from resource management knowledge area. It shows the resources potentially available for the project broken down by resource category and type. Resource calendars. This is another output of process estimate activity resources from resource management knowledge area. The actual availability of resources may vary during the project because they may also be used on other project or operational work. The resource calendar identifies when and for how long identified project resources will be available for use on this project. Remember, resources may be material, human resources, equipment, etc. Project team assignment. It is output of acquired resources which provide list of resources assigned to the project. Risk register. It contained information on risk which may impact resource selection and availability. For example, if you have assigned a specific named resource to do an activity because of his expertise, then the risk is there is no alternative if that resource goes on emergency leaves or leave the company. Assumption log. 
the assumption may influence the way activity durations are estimated. Assumptions may contain information on project risk that may impact the project schedule. Lesson learned register. Of course, these are the lesson learned from the past estimation activities from the previous project. Enterprise environmental factors. So what are the EF that are critical to this process? A reference database containing duration estimate for similar activities productivity matrices, published commercial information on duration estimates for a standard work done in the industry, location of the team members. So all e these EF can impact the estimation. Organizational process assets. What are the OPA that can impact, yeah, that can influence uh, activity duration estimates? We have historical duration estimates from the historical information, project calendar from other similar project, again, historic, historical information, scheduling methodology, lesson learned repository from other similar projects, especially about how duration estimates were done. So these all are the inputs for this process. Let's get into tools and techniques. The tools and techniques are Expert judgment, analogous estimate, parametric estimate, three-point estimate, bottom-up estimate, data analysis, decision-making, and meetings. Expert judgment. Remember, you are not expert on everything on the project. Well, being a project manager, you can call yourself as a project management expert, but on the technical areas, you have to leave, leave it to the expert. All estimation should be done by expert in respective domain. Expert can be internal to the organization or they can be external. Complex project needs many experts and they have to work together to come out with the estimation. Think about a project like underwater gas pipeline and you want to estimate activity to join two pipes through a special type of welding. Well, who will do the estimates? Of course, it will be expert. You will ensure to get experts on project with expertise in general schedule development, management and control, for example, expert with knowledge of using scheduling tool, and specific expertise in estimating or experience with a similar projects in the past. So in this case, someone who worked on a similar underwater pipeline project can do a better estimates. Analogous estimation. It is a top-down estimating technique. In this technique, experts estimate duration of activity using historical data from similar activity or a project. Expert uses think analogy. So something based upon similar activity or project done in the past. Remember, earlier we talked about estimation done by a painter to paint the house. Well, he used think analogy while estimating. The benefit of this technique is it is relatively quick and low cost. However, it is a gross value estimation approach. It means all project specific details are not considered. So sometimes it results into huge variance. Let's go back to the house painting example to understand this. Now in that example, estimation was done uh, by the painter. Everything was agreed and painter came on agreed date to paint the house. But for his surprise, this was 19th century wooden house and there is a beautiful garden surrounding the house. So what happened now? So whatever the estimation he had done earlier is gone for a toss and now he knows it is going to take almost double the time to paint this house. Please remember, analogous estimation also uses some sort of a parameters parameters like duration, budget, size, but they are not explicitly used. They are used in the mind of expert while he is estimating. The next tool and technique is parametric estimation. It is also a top-down estimating technique. In this technique, sophisticated algorithms are used to calculate duration based on historical data and multiple project parameters. Algorithm uses statistical relationship between historical data and the project parameters. 
think about large construction project, uh, say road or railways construction project. You might be wondering how estimates are done for such a huge project. So answer is simple. Of course, a lot of this company uses a standard software tools which uses lots of parameters and based upon those parameters, estimations will be done. One of the well-known construction cost and duration estimation tool is Candy Software. Let's understand what are these parameters. Let's take an example. If a resource is capable of installing 100 meter of a train track per hour, then installation of 1000 meters or one kilometer track will take approximately 10 hours. This is just one parameter. However, in real life, we will need to feed in many parameters to get the accurate project estimates. The accuracy of estimate is dependent on accuracy of historical data. So how good is your historical data? Garbage in, garbage out. Next is sophistication and scalability of model. Don't expect to get the same result by buying $100 tool compared to $1,000. Uh, say $100,000 tool. And finally, a quantifiable parameters and the number of parameter. The advantage of this technique is estimations are very quick. However, they are not as accurate as bottom-up estimation estimating technique. Well, we will talk about bottom-up estimating technique in coming slides. Next tool and technique is bottom-up estimates. In this technique, you estimate the duration of each activity and then aggregate the estimate for a different level of components as per work breakdown structure. So what are the steps involved? First, you sum up the duration of each activity for each work package. Then you sum up the subtotal for each work package and then roll up these levels of WBS until you get the estimate for the entire project. The advantage of this technique is it is highly accurate. However, the disadvantage is it is time consuming because you are estimating individual activities and then rolling them up. It is exact opposite to top-down estimating techniques that is analogous estimation and parametric estimation. Next tool and technique is three-point estimation. It is a technique of estimating duration by applying an average of optimistic, pessimistic, and most likely estimates. Most likely here means this is estimate based on assumptions such as the resources will be available for the activity, the productivity of resources will be so and so, required machines or tools will be available for the activities, and so on. Optimistic, this is based on the best case scenario for the completion of activity. And pessimistic is based on worst case scenario for the completion of activity. This is also called as PERT estimate. P-E-R-T stands for Program Evaluation and Review Technique. We have two formulas for this technique. Triangular distribution, which is a plain average formula, where we have optimistic plus most likely plus pessimistic divided by three. And then we have beta distribution, which is also called as weighted average, where we have optimistic plus four most likely plus pessimistic divided by six. Let's take an example to understand this. Imagine you are working on a software development project and experts are estimating activity duration uh, in the meeting. Now, one of the experts says, assuming Programmer will have regular skill set and everything required to complete that activity is available. He will need 12 hours to complete this work, yeah, this activity. Now, this is considered as a most likely scenario. If you are coding guru, yeah, you get a coding guru as a resource. Optimistically, activity can complete in 10 hours. And if a programmer has just joined the organization are very new to the team and he has no understanding of the project, then pessimistically, 
he might take 16 hours to complete this activity. Now let's put these numbers and apply the formula to get the result. For a triangular distribution, your estimate will be optimistic plus most likely plus pessimistic divided by 3 that will result in 12.66 hours. And through a beta distribution, your weighted average, we get result that is 12.33 hours. Well, answers, your calculations are very simple once you remember the formulas. So you just need to plug in the numbers and you get the results. For more formula-based examples and questions, you can refer to the last session under this uh, chapter. So we will have a designated specific uh, session only for formulas and examples. Let's take a few more examples for three-point estimation technique. So in a software project, a module was estimated to take 25 hours for an average programmer as the most likely estimate. The pessimistic estimate of 35 hours may be based on the assumption for a newbie programmer, whereas optimistic estimate of 20, 20 hours for a veteran programmer. Calculate the estimation using weighted average technique. And of course, you have four options given. So how do we calculate this? Let's start with identifying values. So optimistic, we have 20 hours. Most likely scenario, we have 25 and pessimistic 35 hours. Now what is the formula for weighted average? So we have optimistic plus four most likely plus pessimistic divided by six. Plug in the numbers 20 plus four into 25 plus 35 divided by six, which means 155 divided by six, which gives you result 25.83. So answer three is yeah, answer C is correct. There is a concept of standard deviation under three-point estimate. Look at the graph, you can see the average in the center. It is also referred as mean R median. The standard deviation represents the distance a given point is from the mean. It is also called as sigma. Low standard deviation means data is closely clustered around the mean. High standard deviation means data is dispersed over a wide range of values. Standard deviation is used to understand if a specific data point are standard and expected, or unusual or unexpected. How standard deviation is linked with estimations? Remember three-point estimate formula? So in which we got optimistic, most likely and pessimistic estimate. Imagine your team tells you optimistically task will take two days and pessimistically it may take 20 days. Do you smell something wrong with this estimation? Of course, yes. If you take the average of both estimates, it's 11 days. You could see there is a huge deviation between both estimates. As we learned earlier, some deviations are standard and expected, but some of them are unusual and unexpected. The standard deviation can be referred as 1 sigma, 2 sigma, 3 sigma. Remember, there are standard values for each of these standard deviation are sometimes referred as a sigma value. So 1 sigma is 68.27, 2 sigma is 95.45% and 3 sigma is 99.73%. You can also see these values on the graph. So lower the value, the spread is low. Higher the value, the spread is high. So 3 sigma has a higher spread, which means it will accommodate more uh, numbers here, more data points. The formula for standard deviation is Pessimistic minus optimistic divided by 6. Remember that this formula is really an approximation of standard deviation. Standard deviation calculation, your yeah, formulas in quality management theories like Six Sigma is totally different. Let's take one simple example followed by one more using a Sigma value. Let's take question on standard deviation. 
Anand is a project manager managing a CRM project. The project is under estimation. Team has completed the estimation and informed that most likely it will take 15 weeks to complete the project. Optimistically, it can be shortened by two weeks as they have done similar CRM implementation in the past and they have reusable code and expertise. However, there are dependencies on the client and uncertainty around travel, visa, and computer connectivity at a client place, which means additional five weeks may be required. What is the standard deviation of this estimate? You have four options. So let's see how to calculate this. The step one is we need to identify the values for optimistic, most likely, and pessimistic scenarios. So most likely value is straight away given 15 weeks. Optimistically, it says it may be shortened by two weeks, means 15 minus two. So optimistic value is 13. And pessimistic value is 15 plus maybe additional five weeks. So pessimistic is 20. So step two is calculate the standard deviation. So the formula is P minus O divided by six, and let's plug the values 20 minus 13 divided by 6, which means 7 divided by 6, which is 1.17. So answer is C. Let's take one more example where we will use the sigma values. In a software project, a module was estimated to take 25 hours for average programmer as the most likely estimate. The pessimistic estimate of 35 hours may be based on the assumption for a newbie programmer, whereas optimistic estimate of 20 hours for a veteran programmer. Using the weighted average technique, you determine that there is a 95% yeah, 95.5% probability that the module will be completed in your yeah, four option option a 25 to 28 hours b 23 to 28 hours and so on so how do we calculate this so the step one is to calculate the weighted average so what are the values we have we have optimistic, which is 20, most likely, which is 25, and pessimistic, which is 35. So the formula is optimistic plus four most likely plus pessimistic divided by six. So we have 155 divided by six, which is 25.83 hours. So we got the weighted average. Now let's calculate the standard deviation. So how do we calculate this? The formula is pessimistic minus optimistic divided by six. So we have 35 minus 20 divided by six, which gives us a sigma value of 2.5 hours. So the standard deviation is 2.5 hours. So what is the range that we need to select? So what is the option that we'll select? So the question says, you want 95% of a probability or confidence in your final estimate. So refer to the standard deviation values. So 95% means two sigma value. So let's calculate the upper end uh, range. So weighted average plus two sigma, where two sigma is nothing but, uh, which is 95.45. So we have 25.83 plus 2 into 2.25, which is 30.83 hours. And lower end of the range is 25.83 minus. Remember, when you are calculating the upper range, you added the standard deviation. When you are calculating the lower range, you have to subtract. So you are taking weighted average, which is 25.83 mi minus two sigma, two into sigma. Now sigma, the standard deviation value we got was 2.5. So two into 2.5, which means 25.83 minus five, which gives us an answer 20.83. So the answer is between 20.83 to 30.83. Therefore, answer is B.
Next tool and technique is data analysis. It is used to analyze the activity duration estimate. Now, what are these techniques? You have reserve analysis. It is a process of determining contingency and management reserve needed for the project. Of course, we'll talk about this in detail in upcoming slides. Alternative analysis. It is about comparing various level of resource capability or skills, different tools such as manual versus automated, etc. It can be used to analyze various assumptions taken during the estimation of activities, especially during the three-point estimates described earlier. Reserve analysis. Through this, we analyze reserves and ensure they are absolutely required. We have two types of reserve, contingency reserve and management reserve. Contingency reserves are those that can be used by project manager and management reserves are those that needs approval of management. Management here may refer to steering committee, sponsor or responsible authority. Contingency reserve, in this case, it can be time reserves or buffer are used in a schedule to account schedule uncertainty. Project manager has to use reserves to protect baseline and constantly reduce it or eliminate it. Quantitative analysis like Monte Carlo can be used to identify reserves on the project schedule. Reserves can be at activity level or work package level, or it can be fixed amount or can be percent of estimates. Decision making. Voting is one of the way of making a decision if there are alternatives available for activity duration estimates. There are different types of voting. Fist of five are first to five. This is a voting technique used in Agile, especially in a software development project. This technique used by Agile software development teams to poll team members and achieve consensus. How this is used? It has a three different gestures. Close fist indicate no support. Five finger open indicates full support. And if less than three fingers are open, then the objection is discussed until everyone has three or more fingers open. Meetings. Anytime you have group decision, it is important to have face-to-face -face meeting or virtual meeting as the next best alternative. In Agile, sprint planning or iteration meeting is used to discuss prioritized product backlog and estimations. There are special rules for such a meeting. Sprint planning is done on day one of iteration. It is attended by product owner, project manager or scrum master as well as the team members. Stories are broken into tasks which are estimated in hours, then checked against team capacity. Finally, all that information will be resulted in prioritized sprint backlog, assumptions, constraint, risk, dependencies, and decision or actions. The output of estimate activity duration process are duration estimates, basis of estimates, and project document updates. Duration estimates. These are estimated duration which are likely number of time periods required to complete activities. As you can see in the table, there is a duration estimate against each activity. Of course, estimation can be at activity level or work package level or it can be at deliverable level. It is important to properly communicate estimate. Estimate should be given in a range. The range may be expressed as plus or minus one week are in terms of a confidence level such as 85% of probability to complete task on time. Basis of estimates. The assumption made during the exercise are added to the assumption log. However, there are additional supporting details like documentation of any known constraint that may influence the estimate, documentation of how the duration estimates were developed, Indication of range of estimate, for example, plus or minus certain percentage. Sometimes they might be documented in terms of a confidence level of estimate. 
All these basis of estimates also help in analysis of estimation related issue. For example, if a certain type of activities are always getting delayed, then through the basis of estimation, you can find out what was the estimation technique used, what were the assumptions made, and who had done those estimates. And this information might help you to uh, identify the root cause of those issues. Project Document Updates Following project document get updated as a result of activity duration estimate. Activity attributes. The activity duration estimates are added to the list of activity attributes for each activity. Assumption log. Any assumptions made during the estimations are added to the assumption log. Lesson learned register. Any tools and techniques that were effective or efficient in developing activity duration estimates are added to the lesson learned register. Good job, you have completed estimate activity duration process. Let's do a quick review. In overview, we learned purpose of estimate activity duration process. We gone through the process definition. We talked about various important terms. We had gone through ITTOs. We talked about tools and techniques like analogous, parametric, three point and bottom up estimates. We also start, talked about standard deviation and duration estimate and basis of estimation. See you in next session that is develop schedule process. Thank you.